Time to go to work. Jerk of all trades podcast. Episode number eight. Episode eight. What's up, Ray? We have an awesome fucking show lined up for all of you guys. Hell yeah. We got a little UFC 211 recap. Yes. Looking forward to that. Some hackers Hacker. hacking into everybody's shit. They are coming for your shit. God your damn it, man. Leave us alone. Come on. They're We're not just trying to live. Hey, they're in Europe, man. And I have a Mac, so I'm fucking good. Yeah, well, they're I'm in good Europe, for right now. So. But fucking hey, man, they could reach out and touch us from anywhere. Don't fucking touch me. And if you're going to touch me, do it in the right way. Yeah, so. make it nice, please. Yes, please. Uh, oh. We got United Airlines. Yes. They're fucking up again, Ray. Oh, my God. What man. the fuck, man? I, I've got a very special surprise for United Airlines uh, this week. So should be should be a fun one. Absolutely. We tease some stuff on Instagram. We got a lot of tech talk. Yes. We got some funny stuff. Yes. But as uh, always, first off, I'm going to throw it to Ray. We got something uh, a little serious. going. Yeah. On so, you know, uh, I we had the whole show lined up. We had all the topics lined up and I was I'm a night owl and I was up late last night and I was chilling outside and I was listening to a little music and I was on the the face of the book and I saw that fucking Chris Cornell of Soundgarden and uh, Temple the Dog and Audio Slave had unfortunately passed away. He's 52 years old or he was 52 RFP years Chris old. Cornell. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, he he died and some more information is coming out. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So um, we're going to start it on a little somber note and then we're going to go to some more funny shit and some interesting stuff. Uh, but I wanted to start with this. So the reason why I felt like we should start the show with this is that um, so music has been the lifeblood of my life uh, since I was about 11 years old or so. So um, when I first discovered the band Nirvana, uh, my life completely changed and I found an outlet and something that spoke to me and um, definitely Soundgarden was a big, big part of that. I was into the grunge scene pretty hard and I absolutely loved Soundgarden and the songs that they created really, really resonated with me. And uh, yeah, I have to say that this really hit me hard because uh, prior to this, um, obviously Kurt Cobain, you know, killed himself. So that was uh, that was a big hit. And we had Lane Staley. I'm a huge, huge Allison Chains fan. And uh, Lane Staley uh, didn't kill himself, but uh, he had very, very nasty drug habit. And uh, unfortunately, he died um, a few years ago. And then uh, a couple of years ago, Scott Weiland died from the Stone Temple Pilots. And uh, now we have, unfortunately, Chris Cornell has died. And as more information has come out, um, it seems like he actually kind of did the same thing that Kurt Cobain did. He unfortunately killed himself, which is um, really, really disappointing. And I guess we don't really know exactly what was going on in his life. And um, maybe we don't really need to know. But uh, yeah, um, super sad. It's uh, it's super sad. Um, Chris Cornell uh, was born in uh, uh, July 20th, 1964, and he died on May 17th, uh, only 52 years old. Um, and the crazy thing to me is that he was actually on tour uh, with Soundgarden. Yeah, he was living up, living it up, man. It wasn't like he was just sitting at home doing living nothing. the dream, or as you know, that's you know people he was say out that there getting it in but, yeah, Soundgarden. Absolutely, man. Uh, obviously, you know he was probably doing all right financially. He had Soundgarden. He had Audio Slave, which was uh, when uh, Zach De La Rocha had left Rage Against the Machine. Uh, Chris Cornell came in and became the lead singer of the band and they formed Audio Slave. Um, I have to say, I didn't really listen to them all that much. Definitely Soundgarden is the biggest hit for me. And uh, uh, also Temple of the Dog, man, I fucking, uh, I loved, love Temple of the Dog. Hunger Strike to me is like the fucking 90s grunge alternative song. So uh, yeah, this, uh, this definitely hit pretty hard. Obviously Soundgarden was a huge, huge fucking band in the rock world for a very long time. Um, God damn it, super unknown, man. How many goddamn hits on that? Bad Motor Finger, Jesus Christ Pose is like a song that I just absolutely fucking love. Uh, Fell on Black Days is a song that I have listened to God knows how many times. Um, and it, it 
honestly is pretty fitting in this scenario. So this is a, this is a super, super sad uh, story to hear about. Usually I don't get too wrapped up in the, Hey, the uh, celebrity has died kind of thing. Um, you know, because people die all the time. Unfortunately, that's the nature of life. You got life, you got death. And, uh, but yeah, this particular one just hit me pretty hard because I kind of felt like my childhood was kind of dying. So I just wanted to kind of start the show off. I know it's a somber note, but I just wanted to, um, you know, wherever he is, whatever, um, after life or whatever does or doesn't exist. Cause nobody really fucking knows. Um, I just wanted to send fucking positive energy out into the world and everybody, his family and his friends and For such sure. that are mourning and all of the fans of the music that he created. And obviously he made a huge impact in this world. And I used to love Soundgarden. Yeah, I still Low love key. Soundgarden. Yeah, man. I, out of all the rock bands back in the day, I definitely like that shit came on the radio. I'll let that one ride out. Man, man uh, Chris Cornell, like, God damn, man, the voice, the octave range of Chris Cornell is just there's not a lot of people who have that vocal range and he can just make you feel by you know his vocals and so um, it's definitely super sad but the music and everything that he created is still going to live on and I just wanted to start the show and say you know what rest in pre uh, sorry rest in uh, rest in peace Chris Cornell um, you created some amazing fucking music that affected me and a lot of other people and you deserve every goddamn tribute that is going to be coming to you. And uh, yep, yep. yeah, you know what? Uh, it's sad when you see anyone, you know, lose their life and when they lose their life at their own hands. And I, I think this really puts perspective on the fact that you can't buy happiness, man. You know, he, he had it all. And unfortunately there were some other demons that were at play that honestly, like I said, we probably shouldn't know. And um, yeah, so let's uh, let's figure out what's going on. Life with is so fragile. Yes, it is. So one day you're here, and then one day you're not. Absolutely. So, so your loved ones, your friends, your family, don't take them for granted. Yeah. Because there's going to be a day they're not going to be there. Absolutely. And it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks, man. It sounds cliched, but fucking hug the ones you love. Tell them that you love them uh, because they're important, and they're not going to be here forever. None of us are going to be here forever. So let's make the fucking most of what we have while we have it, and that's why. Eddie and I are here with the Jerk of All Trades podcast because we absolutely fucking love doing this. Uh, we look forward to it every goddamn day, putting out an awesome, awesome fucking show for you guys. And that is Hell absolutely yeah. what we have going on this week. So um, with R. that R. said, Chris Cornell. <laughs> with that said, uh, rest in peace, Chris Cornell. And let's fucking hit the ground running, Eddie. Let's All right, yeah. do it, man. Uh, back to our regular schedule program, yes. right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, man, we got these hackers hacking into shit. Goddamn hackers, all man. All over the world. By the way, we love you hackers, and please do not hack us, because we love you. So There's a story. Tell uh, them about it, man. Hackers using the NSA tools, a national security agency tools, to launch the largest cyber attack ever. Ever. The attack was on more than 57,000 computers across 74 countries. Nobody is safe. Including Spain, Portugal, Russia, and Taiwan. The United Kingdom was attacked as well. Very hard, very um, hard. Many, many, uh, there were a lot of hospitals that were uh, attacked in this. Um, they were going after, you know, you know hospitals. Which Come I don't on, man. Understand. Sick goddamn people are out there. They just want to check in, and you've already got a convoluted fucking process for people to come into a hospital. Yeah, yeah. And now you've got goddamn hackers who are like making, you have extra forms and shit you got to fill out, and that's fucked up, man. That is fucked up. So, yeah, I mean, they, they forced doctors in England to turn away patients. Yeah, that's not cool. Which is, yeah, not cool at all. And then uh, the hackers request, requested $300 in Bitcoin uh, per computer via screenshot threatening to delete the computer files on the on those computers that's fucked up i thought so they're looking for a little bitcoin they want that bitcoin you yeah. know what? i'm actually so i i thought that the bitcoin bubble had kind of popped um so you know maybe it's, not overseas it's that uh the cryptocurrency that uh was uh, popping up online and uh yeah you could uh you could get uh bitcoin you know either by you know, your dollar or doing things like, um, you know, utilizing your computer as a server for different things. And, um, so yeah, they wanted, uh, they wanted $300 in Bitcoin. Apparently Bitcoin is here again. Um, sure. But, uh, yeah, that's, have you invested in Bitcoin yet? I have actually not invested in Bitcoin. I have considered looking into it, but, uh, yeah, me too. I have, I've actually not, 
I think it's a really, really interesting concept to move away from, you know, a country's currency and United move, States Treasury. Uh, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah. the Federal Reserve. So yeah, I have that'd be a big change. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is uh, this is fucking crazy to me. So, you know, I like I said, you know, over the, the course of the show, I've talked uh, about being, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tech savvy, but I'm not a, I'm not deep, deep, deep into the game like some people are. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Mr. Robot. It's like one of my absolute favorite fucking shows and definitely believe that we will be talking about Mr. Robot at some oh, point. Yeah. Uh, definitely. But I'm really the, the thing that really interests me in this is that. So with the advent of the internet and the information highway, as they try to make it uh, make it be, and uh, nobody really uh, bit onto that, but what it's really done is it's kind of given power back to, uh, you know, people that normally wouldn't have power in their everyday lives. And I know that that's a, a sweeping statement, and I don't mean it to be that way. But um, people that you know in the current structure really don't have a lot of power. But guess what? Everyone's on the internet. Everyone's on social media. Um, the celebrity hacks that we've talked about, um, being able to hack into the cloud and be able to take you know people's private photos and put them out there. Um, yeah, they, it's really given a lot of power to people that understand the very particular ways that the um, you know that uh, computers work and stuff. And so, yeah, if um, you're a is... giant nerd sitting in the basement <laughs> of your parents' house. You actually have an outlet. Now. I'm really trying to step back, and I don't want to oh, say. I mean, too many I'm not saying all, <laughs> all. All hackers are not nerds, and no. if, you know you can hack into Just our Instagram. Like most, and, uh, most of them, give us a uh, 500 million more followers. Give us some of those Kendall that. Jenner. Uh, we were going to talk about Kendall Jenner, but I'll, I'll just drop. No, that. we weren't. <laughs> we, we wanted at least like 10 million of her followers to follow us. So yeah, so if we got a hacker in the basement of uh, the United Kingdom that can work that out for us, we're all yeah. We don't. We that. really don't know where they are at this point. Um, or yeah, allegedly. Yeah, they they have they have not been found. Um, this has not been resolved yet this is still happening and it's one thing i will say is stop going after hospitals please yeah it, of all the things to attack hospitals really that, i mean come on son that's one of the things that does bother me a little bit about this is that there has to be some level of respect in which this is done so i mean i get it you know you want code of ethics right there has to be a code of ethics in the hacker game and i'm sure that there is in but I don't see that how this would possibly meet that. Like what, what exactly, you know, when they, when there's like a shitty company out there and hackers like hack their website, uh, I believe they recently hacked the ISIS website and put, put a bunch of gay porn on there. Uh, <laughs> that to me, that's dope. I mean, that, that, that's, that's po- dope as fuck. That that's funny. And that's like really, but like, this is like, go hack United airlines. I don't right. give a fuck, <laughs> but don't hack into a fucking hack, hospital. man. Hack, People need help. Hack the enemies of the jerk of all trades podcast. Yes, but don't hack hospitals and like, okay, so they're, you know, their big thing is they want money. So this is like, I I don't see like what exactly they're trying to accomplish with this besides just getting a bunch of fucking Bitcoin, which is kind of shitty. And so this is definitely not following what I would consider to be the hackers code of ethics. No. Um, So, yeah, this is, I don't know. I, I, I like the idea that hackers can, uh, you know, do things like this and that they can kind of put power back into the everyday man, but they're not doing this here. They're doing this for their own benefit and they're doing this to line their own pocketbooks. And they're really just giving in to the corporate machine more. And I don't think this is fucking cool at all. All they're going to end up doing is ruining the internet for everybody. They're going to cause Washington, D.C. to clamp down on all these websites. So let me ask you. And fucking just, like, destroy all the free internet in the world. Let let me ask you a question there, Eddie. What's up? So, uh, based on that, what would you say that your savior, Mr. Donald Trump, would do about this? Because you made sure to make it a point. Well, first, he's got to (laughs) take ISIS out. That's his main. All objective. right. So the number the number one uh, goal of him is to take out the Egyptian goddess Isis, and then he's going to shut the internet down. Is that correct? Negative. Okay. What uh, the these hackers did not attack the United States. I don't know if you noticed or not. Uh, yeah, they did not. They did not attack. I, so Donald Trump has nothing to do with these guys. Okay. What about Putin? Is, did they attack Russia? 
It does. I do because they did attack Russia. Yes. Let's let's not forget. Are, are you going back to the cock holster? <laughs> uh, God damn it! You cannot. You cannot. Pre- <laughs> I've known you too long. Rick. You cannot preemptively use my joke that I was going to go to. So yeah, they didn't no, attack the do United it. States. So I don't think Trump will do anything with this. They have not yet. But I mean, let's be honest here. I but mean, if it that does has happen, to be a goal, right? I don't know, man. Trump don't fuck around. That has to be a goal. So what? You know what he has to do? Shut the internet down. You know what? Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Throw the internet out with the hackers. Um. You know, on the baby reference, they call it "wanna cry," and I'll I'll tell you what: if you thought all of your information was going to be flushed down the goddamn toilet, you might cry too. So, um, I guess it's a very very fitting name. I think an interesting aspect of this too is so you have this thing; it pops up and um, it tells you basically, "Hey, I want three hundred dollars in bitcoins," and or your or, files or otherwise, getting deleted. all your shit's getting deleted, which but, is fine with me. Delete all my shit. I but here's care. the thing. There's no guarantee that if you give them those three hundred dollars, that they're actually not going to still delete your shit. Like you That's just right. have to assume that they have some sort of ethics, which clearly, based on this hack, they don't have. They don't. They have they're no fucking. Hackers. They're gonna delete your shit, so and then they're gonna say we need another three hundred to uh, think about it all over again. This is why you need an external hard drive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like that would save everything. Like if you had an external hard drive, all your shit would be there, and then you could just be like, "Fuck it, fuck you." And I'm not Ray has an immense amount of stock in SanDisk. Uh, yeah, I believe I, I believe I actually have my book is. Uh, yeah, I have uh, I have a Western Digital, uh, my passport. I probably shouldn't be revealing that. That's pro- uh, no, don't do that. Yeah, that, that that's a vulnerability that I'm uh, throwing out there. So Fuck that shit. definitely don't hack into my <laughs> my external hard drive as well as uh, that's connected directly to my computer. So I guess you could do well, that. Well, you too, know so. what, man? It's unknown who these hackers are. It could have been nobody anybody. knows. It could be fucking. It could be fucking Rocky from Rocky Four. It could be fucking Dolph Lundgren from Rocky Four. I'll tell you who it wasn't. Who was it not? It was definitely not a UFC fighter. It was not a UFC fighter. <laughs> They're busy putting in work. This in is the gym. true. This is true. So with all of the hacker stuff being said, I'm gonna throw to Eddie right now. He's gonna give you a blow by blow recap of ufc 211 well, i don't know if it's gonna be that good uh you know what he's gonna give you a couple blows i'm gonna break it down a little bit he's gonna break it down for you and uh, ufc talk about 211 UFC so yes, here we sir. go man the last saturday ufc 211 good night for your boy eddie the jerk yeah uh dallas texas uh live on shout pay-per-view. out to dallas shout out dallas texas on uh, the main event stipe miocic knocked out uh junior dos santos two minutes into the first round that was a quick fight man you call you I believe you called that. Did you call that? Actually, I called the over, but uh, yeah, you didn't call it. I did call Stipe, which is you uh, did also call me. Dolph Lundgren and Rocky Four, so it is yeah, what it is. Stipe, so Stipe, I'm not going to uh, judge you too much. No, don't do that, please. I'm actually going to judge you a lot. Year, I'm not six years old anymore. <laughs> uh, I hope not. Stipe, first round knockout. Didn't see that coming, but uh, you know, Stipe Miocic, man, like I said, he puts that punch on you. You're going to sleep, so yeah, uh, not a good night for a junior, but uh, he'll bounce back. He'll be fine. He can he can knock out just about anybody in the UFC, so he's except for Stipe, right? You never know if they fight again, he might get knocked out. That's true. They're heavyweights, man. The heavyweights, man. But yeah, did he break the record? By the way, I know you were talking about he tied the record. He tied the record now. One more fight, and he will break the record. Might break the the record. Heavyweight title defenses at three. At three, so he's at two. So uh, keep putting in that work, Stipe. You might uh, break that damn record. And then the co-main event, your girl Joanna Young Jacek. Pure domination. What a fight, man. Over uh I did actually Andrade. I actually watched I watched this with Eddie. Um so he was uh, talking about breaking my UFC cherry. I have I talked about before, you know, I've watched it certainly U- wasn't easy. I've watched UFC, you know, multiple times, <laughs> but uh yeah, this was uh this was an interesting fight. Um I'll let you tell him about the fight and then uh, I have my own little comment on it. So. You're okay with the women fighting, right? Yeah, it was it was You weren't too squeamish? No, it, this was interesting because this was one of the first times I've really watched a full on woman's fight in UFC. And uh, I did comment that there was quite a bit less slapping and hair pulling than you would normally expect. And I think that's mainly because they had braids in, but uh, yeah, it was really, really interesting, but yeah, there's a lot of awesome, awesome technique and such that was employed there. And I was pretty, I was pretty this impressed was, by that. This was pure domination yeah. from Joanna. It didn't work. She's, well at for her, her. she's at her best right now. Um, this was just like five rounds of target practice. What is what's it reminded me a lot of Anderson Silva. There was a uh, fight Anderson Silva had about mm, five years ago against Damian Maya, which Damian Maya, he's coming up later, but he's a pure jujitsu guy, but he clowned Damian Maya like no other. 
And uh, I just remember this one moment in the fight where Anderson snapped a jab off Damian Maya's nose. Just pow, right in the nose, right in the face. Just so easy. And then he blew a kiss at him. He was just like... It, you don't want that just, to happen just, after you get punched yeah, in the fucking just nose. To, just to show that, like, hey, I, I could, could do yeah. that a hundred times if yeah. I wanted to. And that reminded me of Ioana. Yeah. She could have done anything she wanted at any moment of that fight. Uh, the first round got a little scary for her. She almost got her <laughs> fucking mouthpiece knocked out. Uh, and Draj hit her with a little bit of that power. And uh, she got slammed a little bit, too, in this fight. But uh, rounds three, four, and five was just complete target practice yeah yoana at her I definitely best. noticed that and uh i'm gonna have a hard time picking against yoana ever again well, even though her uh her numbers in vegas are gonna skyrocket after this fight what was the name of the girl that she fought jessica andraj so i remember one particular moment that i remembered where she was just getting fucking stomped and she just came at her with these like weak ass body shots over and over, like pushing her against the cage. And it was so desperate and sad. And you could just tell that she stood no, no chance. But I mean, I, I give it to she her, man. She, no, she did not give up. She fucking, she definitely laid it to her. And uh, it was, uh, it was an interesting fight. My comment on this was uh, after the fight, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm terrible with the name. So what, what was the name of the girl that won? You want a champion? You want a champion. So I remember seeing her forehead and she had multiple lumps on her head. She had one in particular that looked about the size of a fucking softball. And uh, I believe I said that it looked lumpy as fuck. And I tried to reference the Toxic Avenger to Eddie, who Eddie was completely unfamiliar with. No idea. And, uh, maybe, he wasn't in Rocky IV, was he? I don't believe the Toxic Avenger was in Rocky IV. I didn't Rocky watch 4. that gay shit when I was six years old. No, no. <laughs> toxic kidding. Avenger is pretty badass. He gets thrown into a uh, vat of uh, toxic waste and turns into a badass, uh, you know. Uh, I think I might have <laughs> saw that when I was five years old. Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty badass. Uh, but anyway, that's my comment on it, so. All right, continuing yeah. on. Uh, you want a, one more to tie the record set by Ronda Rousey for uh, title defenses for a female in the U UFC. So uh, get at it, girl. I think she can do it. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, the next fight was my money fight. Uh, Damian Maya over Jorge Masvidal. Split decision. I thought, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. That to was me. the questionable fight, right? Nah, well, I thought it was a domination from uh, Damian Maya. Was that what Rogan talked about? How that the first been round, a The DQ first round or? could have been a 10-8. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's later. Okay. All right. The first round could have been a 10-8 round, in my opinion. It was just, it was a dominant position for probably four minutes. <laughs> Of a five-minute round. So, I mean, if that's not a 10-8 round, where are these 10-8 rounds going? Uh, or where do they come from? I don't know. Texas has goofy rules for MMA, which we're going to get into later. But uh, Eddie the Jerk scored that 10-8, and uh, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I'm not. But, yeah, uh, I'm not going to liberty to discuss. Kind of surprised to see Jorge steal a uh, judge, uh, judge's score on this one. But uh, Jorge manned up. He, he came out in the second round looking to bang and looking to fucking fire on this guy. And... Uh, did exactly pretty much what I predicted, which was Maya slowing down in the second round and getting banged on a little bit. So, uh, but Maya eventually, you know, got his takedown, and <laughs> Damian Maya is just a wizard in the jujitsu. Uh, if got he that black puts magic. His this is why Anderson Silva ran away from him for, for the most part in Abu Dhabi, is because yeah. if he gets his hands on you, he's going to take your back and fucking just choke the shit out of you. So, Props to Jorge Masvidal for not getting choked the fuck out. Um, but uh, Damian Maya, the number one contender in the welterweight division. I'm saying it. I've been saying it, and I'm going to say it again. No dis disrespect to T. Wood, Tyrone Woodley, the uh, welterweight champion. But I think Damian Maya is your next welterweight champion. You heard it here first. I'm not afraid to call it. I'm not afraid to bet it. And, and he's uh, not afraid of nothing. The problem nothing. is, The problem is with Maya, he gets tired, man. So if you don't get that submission first, second round, Woodley's going to hurt him. He's going to hurt him bad. I get tired, but, too, uh, and I don't even have UFC fights. Dude, man, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I don't do anything for a whole day, and I still get tired. So. Yeah, Tyron Woodley, he's got a little bit of that steep A, man. He's got that death touch. Yeah. So uh, if Maya gets tired, that death touch might put him to sleep. So, Well, we'll have to wait and see. I'm definitely looking forward to that shit. Uh, Damian, Meyer, Damian Maya and Tyron Woodley coming up. Welterweight title. And uh, on to the next one. Boom. Uh, Frankie Edgar stopping Yair Rodriguez. I got this one wrong. This is my first wrong prediction of the uh, of the night. And uh, and betting against Rocky and Rocky Four also. Yeah. What you were six. So yeah, that's okay. So uh, poor Yair, man. I mean, uh, I mean, he gave it his best. He didn't want to quit. The doctor ended up stopping it. His uh, his fucking corner. 
It was a bunch of retards. <laughs> For whatever reason. Yeah, we don't we don't support calling people retards this is on the Jerk of All Trades podcast. But I have an issue with like the cut men. The mentally ill. I don't understand why they don't let a fighter have their own guys handle the cut. I, I can understand if it's a cut, a severe cut that needs a, a professional. But if it's just bruising and swelling, just let one of his corner guys handle the inswell in his eye. Like, why does it have to be the cut man? I mean, and and then the, and in that too, if his face is that bad, there needs to be two guys to help him out. <laughs> like, he might need the inswell and the cut guy. He might need both both of those things going on. So, like, the uh, the fucking cut man completely uh, disregarded his fucking giant swelling around his eye, and uh, went to manage his little cut on under on his cheek, which was you know, it wasn't a scrape, but. Uh, Certainly, the eye, the swelling around the eye was more important. And uh, by the by the end of the second round, he couldn't see. The eye had been swollen shut completely. Uh, stuff that happens in a real fight, not in that pro wrestling stuff. Oh, uh, well, well, we won't even go there. Yeah, I'm so, not. De- uh, I'm not defending that at this point. Okay, <laughs> if you're wanting I'll, me, to I def- didn't think you would. I'm if just... you want me to de- defend wrestling, it's not happening. No, it's not happening. So, so uh, yeah, but Yair will be back to fight another day. Frankie Edgar, man, put it on him real good. That was the best in the guard domination ground and pound that I've seen since Tito Ortiz. I thought Yair would be better off his back, honestly, but uh, he could not handle the power and the pressure from Frankie Edgar not from it. the guard. Sorry, man. All that damage from the guard. You don't see that anymore in the UFC. So Yair's got some work to do and Frankie might be in line for a title shot. So uh, keep your eye on Frankie Edgar right now. Uh, and then uh, on the prelims, uh, we're not going to talk. There's another fight on the main card. It was not that great. So, on to the Skip. next one, yeah. <laughs> Skip. Uh, Eddie Alvarez uh, and Dustin Poirier on FX, the main prelim of the night. My call right now for fight of the year, it's not even close, uh, or maybe it is. I can't think of another fight that's better or as good right now off the top of my head for 2017. Fight of the year in my, in my books, man, w- watching this thing live was bonkers. It was fucking crazy. Bananas. I was enjoying the fuck out of this fight, man. I honestly thought they should have stopped it when Poirier was had him up against the cage. Eddie Alvarez, man, with the counter. I think he got a left hook counter. Uh, put him on Queer Street. And uh, Dustin Poirier, man, didn't know left from right, up from down. And Eddie Alvarez in the second round comes back and uh, hits some uppercuts, man. I was calling for them uppercuts. He was hitting them uppercuts. And uh, Dustin Poirier up against the cage, even though he should have been winning that fight, even though he should have been able to somehow, some way, you know, not be in that position against the fence ended up against the fe- ended up against the fence man Eddie Alvarez all heart all fucking heart man you cannot one giant goddamn heart you can't not love this guy you can't that's not like, love the, that's the, a double negative the so. heart of a fucking fighter man it's all right so uh, Eddie Alvarez you speak with, the king's english with the new rules and the old rules still making illegal knees <laughs> to Dustin Poirier's chrome dome up against the fi- uh, Come up on, I'm bald, fence. god damn it. You can't call people chrome domes. <laughs> well, I wish Dustin oh. Poirier was bald because he definitely has a good set of hair on him. Oh, but anyways, man. uh referee at Herb Dean, you got you got to let these guys know. Big John, the best referee in the business when it's close like that, he's number very, one ref. He's very vocal. He yeah. says, "No." Hand down, or he'll 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 let you know, okay or not okay. Herb Dean, he's a little shy. He, he just likes he to hang out. Can't be shy as a UFC He's, he's, he's kind of like a fan. He's a, he's he's a fan that's in the cage and he steps in when he has to. Yeah. But like other than that, Herb Dean is just chilling. But uh, <laughs> Eddie Alvarez nailing Poirier with two illegal knees to the Chrome Dome up against the fence. There's the Chrome Dome uh, again. The doctor came in. Poirier couldn't see. Obviously, he got rocked severely. Ruled a no contest. Which, uh, in my opinion, I'm fine with. I'm not against it. I'm not for it. You know, he it's has no it's, opinion. It's Herb Dean's call. It's up to Herb Dean. Yeah. If that's his fucking call, that's his fucking call. So, uh, hopefully, rematch. Hopefully, rematch. Please, 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 Dana White, give me that rematch. Dustin Poirier, give it to him, and Eddie Alvarez. Put that shit on Fox. Absolutely, uh, Fox or. Uh, FS1, put that on Big Fox, though. I could co-main or main a, a Big Fox card for sure, and people will go nuts. So that's all I got, man, for UFC. Right. Uh, fight of the Night was uh, on the undercard. I don't have my uh, laptop in my hands right now, so go look it up. Yeah. And uh, uh, Joanna didn't get a bonus, but she probably should have. Yeah. But yeah. she got paid, so it's all good. Uh, Stipe. Yeah. Stipe got knocked out of the night. So yeah. 
big ups to Stipe for that extra 50 Good event, man. Good event. Absolutely. You know what? I, I've said it before. I'm not a huge UFC fan, but I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the fights, and uh, it was a good time. So Eddie was breaking my cherry for once, and that is important because, hey, everybody's cherry deserves to be broken at least it's at a couple to, points in their life. It's so. good to be well-rounded. Yes, become well-rounded. So uh, with that said, Eddie dropped a lot of UFC knowledge on you about UFC 211, and I want to drop a little hate and you know what? I don't normally like to throw hate out there. I'm a pretty generally positive guy, but uh, we've got a brand new fucking segment that we're going to throw out there on the podcast. And I think it's very important to throw hate out there when it is warranted. And so we are going to debut this week, the J O A T podcast. I'm throwing it up middle finger of the week. And this goes to goddamn United Airlines. Fuck you, United. Fucking United Airlines. What the fuck are you doing? Multiple times now, we have said, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your company? Do you just want to run your goddamn company into the ground? You're beating the fuck out of people, and you're dragging them off of planes, and now there are more stories coming out, so we are going to talk about that and give them the middle fucking finger. and They certainly deserve it. Where is it going to go? Track record. Yes. Absurdity. This I is mean, they're off the absurd. charts fucking yes. ridiculous right now. So what did United Airlines do this time, you ask? And I'm going to tell you. So there was, <laughs> there was an emergency room nurse. She suffered from an overactive bladder. And I'll tell you what. When we're on the podcast and we're doing a little drinking, we also suffer from an yeah. overactive bladder. Eddie the jerk can relate. But that's okay. This is just a normal medical condition that this lady has. Uh, she is uh, she's a nurse and she wants to fucking piss. And so apparently what happened is she had to pee and she said, hey, I need to fucking pee. The seatbelt light was on and they basically said, no, you are not allowed to go and pee. The seatbelt light is on. The fucking captain has said everybody needs to sit the fuck down and so sorry. And so she's like, hey, here's the deal. I need to go pee. I have an overactive bladder. And if you don't let me pee, I'm going to need a fucking cup and I'm going to have to pee into the cup. So United, what do they do? Do they say, you know what? We'll make an exception. The seatbelt's on. How long could it be? Right. A minute? Two right. minutes she, to let she's, this bitch pee? She's not like, hey, I, got, I have an overactive rectum. I got a shit right now. No, that's what she should have said. I would have, I would have just straight up shit like a fucking monkey and threw it in their face. But uh, oh, I would have whipped it out and just pissed on the <laughs> flight attendant's shoes. Like, hey, just come here. Whip it out and start helicoptering. And well, I don't want to get it on anybody that don't deserve it. Oh, no, you're not gonna. You're gonna helicopter first, and then you're gonna start urinating afterwards. Ah, okay. And then after that, who fucking knows? But so this lady, they're just basically like, yeah, you know what? So they tell you, hey. I either have to go to the bathroom or you're going to have to give me a cup and I'm going to have to fucking pee on this goddamn plane. What did they say? Hey, not only will you not only will we bring you a cup, we're going to bring you two cups. I'll tell you what, though, those fucking cups on a plane are pretty goddamn small. <laughs> and there ain't no way I could fill that. Gonna make it. <laughs> I could I could definitely, definitely fill one of those. I could fill like five of those. So they fucking they brought the goddamn cups out and she fucking peed in the fucking cups. Imagine, what the fuck? Imagine if you were sitting next to her. It's like, what the fuck is going on? I got to get up. I Why know. Why can't she get up? <laughs> Let her go, man. I don't oh. What's going on here? I didn't even think about that aspect. So the people that yeah. were sitting by her were forced to sit next to her <laughs> as she fucking peed. And she can't even whip her wiener out. And she doesn't have a Gatorade yeah, bottle. No, man. She's got, she's got to try to fucking direct that. At least get a goddamn funnel or something. No. Yeah, this is retarded. So uh, <laughs> United is denying that this happened. Of course they are. Uh, this happened the same day as the Asian the beatdown. beating, the beating. Yeah, the beating. So like, it took a while for this to get out. I guess the woman was very uh, trauma traumatized. She felt I believe. degraded, and she doesn't yeah, want to be known. Justifiably for this. so. But uh, United, get your shit together, man. So um, let me. Uh, so let me. Based on that, I had a little uh, a little story that I wanted to tell. Um, this will this will kind of put out my stupidity. So uh, at one point in my life. Uh, I was going to a lot of concerts, like quite a bit of concerts, and uh, I went I went to a show, and I did a pretty significant amount of drinking, and uh, dropped my buddy off, whatever, and driving back home, and I'm like, man, I gotta fucking piss, like real goddamn bad, 
And so I pulled off of the fucking freeway and I pulled over to, uh, I'm not even sure why, but I pulled off to a, 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 a porn store and, uh, I'm not really sure why I didn't just walk over to like bushes or a fucking tree or something, but I'm like, that's probably a bad idea. So I'm like, man, I got to pee. And I'm like looking for a bottle in my back seat. And right now I have about 75 water bottles in my back seat. So I would have been okay, but I had no goddamn bottles at this point. All I had was a goddamn can. It was a can of soda that didn't have any soda in it anymore. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not sticking the head of my fucking wiener into a goddamn fucking can. No chance. <laughs> so I tried to improvise. I tried to MacGyver it. And so I went into my trunk and I had a funnel. And so I'm like, Hey, I'll fucking, I'll join the funnel that with, could work. with the can and I go into my back seat and I fucking do a little knee action on the fucking seat and I set the can up and I set the, the funnel up and I start going to town. I will also mention that I, at this point I had a hat cause I'm bald. I have a chrome dome, as I said before, and I threw it in the back and I have my brand new concert t-shirt as well. And those are both laying in the back seat. And so I start fucking peeing and I'm peeing in this fucking funnel that I normally put fucking oil and shit in my car. <laughs> and uh, I start peeing into this fucking thing and it's feeling fucking good, man. And it's feeling good. And then it starts to feel a little warm around my fucking knees oh, on my fucking no. pants. And uh, I have now realized that I have actually overflowed the fucking can. That's 12 ounces of fucking pee in this goddamn can. And I am now not only pissing all over my seat, and my fucking myself and my pants. Uh, but I'm also peeing on my fucking hat and I'm also peeing all over my brand new concert t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't you just go in the porn store? Uh, I don't know. Or go around the back of the building. I don't know. Ray, we got to work on your I, peeing skills I make, in uh, I make a lot of bad decisions. In I, public, if you will. I believe that I've talked about how I've peed on a lot of uh, a lot of different things and how I want to pee on a lot of different things. Uh, I had a whole rant a few episodes ago where I talked about having to fucking pee in a goddamn <laughs> government cup so fucking Republicans can fucking test my shit and see what I'm on and... I have a very, very strong hatred of peeing in cups. So this story very, very much resonated with me. And the one thing that I really thought about this was, God damn it, Paul Ryan or Scott Walker or both those motherfuckers have to have stock in United Airlines <laughs> because they want people to pee in cups. United wants them to pee in cups. And I don't fucking like it. So you know what? United Airlines, you get the middle finger of the week on the Jerk of All Trades United. podcast. Enemy number one. Fuck Numero you. Uno. Stop beating people up. Stop dragging them off planes. Stop making them pee in cups. And stop killing goddamn beautiful three-foot fucking bunny rabbits. What the fuck are you doing with your life and your company? We hate you. Fuck you from the Jerk of All Trades podcast. So there it is. The middle finger Hell of the yeah. week. The Shout fucking out to JetBlue. Day Shout due. out to Southwest. Any airline that is not United. If you got to fly somewhere, fuck United. If you have to fly somewhere, fuck it. Get in a goddamn station wagon or something and fucking drive like your fucking ancestors used to do. I don't think your ancestors would have a station wagon, but fuck it. So with that being said, let's fucking hit social media. Let's hit the goddamn first break. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. Let's fucking do the rest of this goddamn we show. Just so like to take the time out. Boom. Say thank you for rocking with us. Absolutely. Uh, you can find us at joetpodcast.com, the official website of the jerk of all trades. We are there. You can get our archives there. You can support the Blood Job Robot there. Episode. You can contact us via email there. Um, every, everything you want and need is all right there. All your jerk of all trades podcast needs in one spot. iTunes. <laughs> iTunes, Apple, we love you. iTunes.com. We talked shit last week, but we still love you. Search for us, jerk of all trades podcast. What's the most important thing of that, though? They need, we would love, if you... Please reviewed us review. Give us a review subscribed honest. If it's five stars and give us that five star rating, Kendall Jenner, five, star. five, you know, five, what's up? five. Imagine it's completed uh, five stars. What else do we say? Trump, Trump, give me that five Trump. You know and, what? Uh, <laughs> if there was going to be one person to rate us one out of five, I want it to be goddamn. Donald no, Trump. hell no. Let's be honest here. He doesn't have any goddamn clue. If How Trump gives us something. a five, we're getting the majority of fives across the nation. All right. That's all right. You won the election. You, you've got that goddamn hard on for him. So if he wants to rate us five out of five, he hey, actually man, probably Trump, like rate Trump's us like winner. two. He'll rate us two and a half. You know, split the diff. So it is Trump's what it is. Trump's a winner, is. man. He, yeah. Maybe he can make us a winner. Oh, my God. Anyways, right. uh, you can find us on Stitcher. 
Stitcher. Stitcher.com. I don't know if it's slash. But, uh, uh, Drink, Drink of all, all trades, trades podcast. podcast we're at there. Stitcher. God damn it. If you're on Stitcher and, you won't have, and you're not subscribed to us. What the fuck are you doing? Get on that, man. Get on, on that Jerk of All Trades podcast. We're everywhere. That we and, are unmissable. Uh, Go back in uh, our archives and thumbs up uh, one through eight, uh, seven while you're there. Yes. And then uh, also SoundCloud. Can't forget about SoundCloud. SoundCloud, the host. SoundCloud. We are the host, but they're the host. And we're hosting that bitch, Jerk of All Trades podcast. Yep, we're there. Uh, you know, our numbers are climbing. and uh, Every week. We steadily. love each and every one of you. Yes. As the kids Unless say. Unless you like Trump. I, and, I don't uh, love you then. Also, newly advised. Google Play. Google Play. Tune in. Boom. Is this iHeartRadio? No, tune in tune in is similar to iHeartRadio, but it's different. So Okay. Oh, we're there. Google Play. Interesting. On your goddamn Android. If you need a fucking Android option, we're there. Yep. Yeah. Tune in. Tune in. And then uh obviously social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Boom. Plus. We're on Google Plus. Don't forget about Is that anyone Google on Plus. Google Plus? We're on it. Yeah, if you're on <laughs> we Google are. Plus, give us that five. Jerk of all trades five podcast stars. on all those. And except then, for uh, Twitter. Twitter, you can hit us at J-O-E-T podcast. Yes. And then email us. Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com. I want to hear from you guys, man. Send your love. Send your love. Send, send your love. love. Keep your H. Turn it sideways. Keep Stick it. it straight up your candy ass. Keep it for the middle we finger of the week. We ain't got time for that so. shit. Yes. Give us that five and we'll be back. All right. Jerk of all trades podcast. We're going to break. Jerk of All Trades podcast. Episode eight. Episode number eight. Back. And, and for our longtime listeners, you're probably wondering about that blowjob robot. We have the update, which will be the final update. Final update. We got your back. Blowjob robot. Yes. Uh, not coming along as strongly as we had hoped. Not not coming along. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, that's an understatement to Is that say, a play on words? I think that might be a play on words. That might be a play on something, but... In what I did not know was possible, it is actually moved backward. It went down. It went down. How did this happen? And usually you want a blowjob robot to go down, and this is not <laughs> what you were thinking yeah. about. So it actually lost like 300 of these goddamn British pounds. Somebody so, came in with some teeth and bit a chunk out that. Yeah, this is this is quite disappointing that. How did this not instantly reach like $10 million? There's only 29 people that back this thing. And I'll tell you what. So this is the final week and we're going to add. You said 29 people, 29 people. Go ahead and make that 31, Ray. Uh, yes, actually, I guess it would be 32. So, uh, let's lay it out there. We actually had someone who actually donated and I love this. They actually donated <laughs> to the J O A T blowjob robot fund. Hell yeah. They donated 10 us dollars to us. And in something that made me giggle like fucking crazy, the comment on the PayPal was, I want a turn. He wants next. He wants he or she, I should say. Who's next? It's probably he, though. We're all next. So hell yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to not only donate that $10, but we, as the Jerk of All Trades podcast, are going to double that donation. And we'll match. We're going to match that donation, and we're going to do it right goddamn now. Hell so, yeah. Here we go. Thanks for the donation. Yes. Um, you know, All In Robotics, I'm sure, appreciates it. They got three days left. It could still happen. And, and uh, you know, you never know. Maybe next year they'll come stronger with a... Uh, 49%. They can make it to 69 <laughs> So we're gonna we're on the page right now, the Arlen Robotics Model 1.0 service droid. We're gonna back this shit right now. So here we go. We're gonna donate twenty dollars. That's the ten dollars that was donated to us, and we're gonna donate another ten dollars. So here we go. Eddie, give them the play by play. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, 
Uh, it's actually in uh, British pounds, so I don't know the conversion rate. So I'm putting 20 and I think 20 that, pounds or $20. I believe 20 pounds is actually less no, than no, dollars. No, no, no. It's probably like $25. Uh, you know what? That's what's pounds happening. is number one. So pounds, euros, then the United States. Dollar. Here we go. We're, we're filling don't it out. Don't quote me on that. We're filling it out. We're going we're gonna to put it as the jerk. Three of, more days left, guys. If you want to donate to that blowjob robot, you can do it through us. Make it a fucking or reality. Or you can do it on your own. Um, but definitely, definitely, if you're interested, uh, we got your back. Yes. We, we will match every donation we get for the next Absolutely. three if days. Absolutely. If we get another donation, and, um, we will definitely we will double that shit. Absolutely. We will definitely match. Here we go. Putting in all of my information. The hackers do not know what I'm putting in. Um, Trump's got your back. I'm putting in other. I hope that's uh, that's known as, you know, the so, Dirk of All Trades yeah. podcast. Hopefully that, uh, oh, I almost donated get weight. Red I almost donated like 2000 So that was not what I hoped Ooh, to do. They might have gotten closer with 2000 Please provide a name for us to use. So, Um... um J O A T. Um, there's com. actually nowhere for me to put that. So, oh, no. Um, we're just going to go to anonymous then, I guess. So, damn. All right, we're doing it anonymously. Hopefully, they don't think we we're don't, hackers. We don't have another way to do it. Here we go. We're waiting on it to. So, yeah, we're definitely doing our best to make this a reality, guys. Um, um, you know, it's just the struggle is real, even for blowjob robots. Yes, yes. Uh, for some reason, that did not go through. So, um, I guess we're gonna we're gonna try that again. Try one more time. If it doesn't work, we'll hit it after the we're break. Gonna, we're gonna type it out directly. So yeah, I mean, I'm definitely interested to see what the 2.0 model, 2.0 model, 3.0 yes. will end up looking like. Because obviously, you know, you look at your iPhones, you look at your iPads. Shit has come a long way in like 10 years that this shit has been out. So 10 years from now, what is this low job robot going to look like? Um. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, this is not allowing, this is not allowing me to uh, to fill this shit out. Um, this is not what I hoped to happen, and we're trying live again. TV, folks. This is live podcasting right here. <laughs> it is not working, so it's all good. All right, so we're just gonna accept that um, they don't want our. Donation. I did not just That's donate a million dollars to this all right, fucking all, thing. All in so. robotics, you can turn your back on us. That's fine. Let's try reloading real quick. We'll I try mean, you're it. just about as bad as Apple, which we're gonna fucking, we're gonna uh, try it one more time. Usage. We're trying it one more time. This is the final time. I know my card number, so this should be correct. Oh yeah. And uh, re- all required information. We're gonna put this there. And we still have three days left, so it should be valid. And um, it's still telling me that it's not going through. It's not taking my card. So, uh oh. Um, so we will figure. We'll the, run it back. We're gonna figure this shit out after the fact. Don't think that we're not gonna donate to that. We'll run it so, back. But uh, yeah. Uh, the <laughs> the blowjob robot fund is definitely getting twenty euros from us. Um, at some point when they can figure their fucking server shit out, because pounds. My card definitely. Well, twenty pounds. Yes, we're uh, donating twenty pounds. GBP. So. Um, and we are gonna we're gonna take that fucking blowjob robot to Pound Town. <laughs> better better fucking believe that that shit is happening. So uh, yeah, welcome to the future. You got blowjob robots and yeah. you got solar panel roofs. Yes, if you got money left after donating to the fucking Arlen Robotics Blowjob Robot Fund, brought to you by JOAT, you're gonna want this shit. So Eddie, tell them about the. Fucking Tesla man, my solar main roof, man, man. Elon Musk doing the damn thing. Seriously, man. Fucking Tesla cars, solar roofs, and fucking underground tunnels. What the fuck is up, bro? He is out of control, man. So, yeah, man, uh, this is a new creation from Elon Musk. Also working on the underground tunnel system. So Los Angeles can be traversed side to side in only six minutes. Six goddamn minutes. Uh, hopefully in 10 years, that'll be a reality, just yeah. like the blowjob robot. Um, also, uh, it's made of shingles that are indistinguishable. From traditional roof tiling. They look uh, pretty fucking cool, man. They look like regular asphalt shingles, but they're definitely not. It's a little on the pricey side, but... Uh, a little bit. You know, 75 Gs. 
Yeah, 75 G's is the average. It's actually $21.85 per square, and I'll tell you what. That's a lot of squares. Uh, I, I've quoted a few roofs in my day, and they definitely are not $21.85 per square. Um, sorry, per square foot, not even square. A square is 100. Uh, this is actually one. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, you put it on once, and you're fucking done, man. That's it. That's going to last the goddamn lifetime of the house. Everything else is going to be in shambles, and you're just going to be left with these goddamn solar roof panels it look there's some pictures that yeah. look super advanced it's fucking cool it's man. definitely an investment the roof pays for itself for yeah. over 30 years yeah and hopefully it'll get less expensive as we go along so yeah and the roof will last the lifetime of the house so this is all good news this is very interesting moving forward you know you got all these power companies that like to charge you know a fair, arm and a goddamn leg yeah, i believe a fair amount of money for a little bit of electricity yeah, it's not that fair actually you know, benjamin franklin he wasn't twisting nobody's arm for no power so. uh yeah and i believe uh Nic- <laughs> nicholas Tesla was uh tesla was also not doing that as well but uh he kind of got his shit stolen so um yeah luckily his company is fucking making it fucking happen now so hell yeah man so uh if you can lower those prices and uh you know, make it better for the consumer and for human beings to live without being hassled by these energy companies all the time. Real quick, I don't want to interrupt, but let's uh, let's. Oh, we got a- some breaking news. Breaking news. What's the breaking news sound? Uh, I uh, ding 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 ding. There you go. Ding, that ding, 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 is ding, ding, the official J O A T podcast. I don't know if that's like. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh, the donation has actually went through the blowjob robot fund. We've actually just got an email. Yes, indeed. It fucking happened. And yeah, that shit. All in robotics. We love you. We may have just donated like. Shout out what, to the donator. We may have just donated like $200 or uh, sorry, 200 euros. So we uh, may or may not. Have I may made have that thing real. I may. I may need to dispute that a little bit, but no. uh, we made it. We made it happen. So there it's about it is. to go backwards, just like it did last week. Yes, that's all right. So yeah, awesome. All right, so Arlen Robotics, we love you. Yes, we love Tesla too, though, man. And we love Tesla. Yeah, this could be huge implications on on life. Could be huge. Absolutely, uh, moving man. Moving forward with the with the solar panel roof, man. As long as the sun doesn't burn out, you're good, right? For the ne- for next. I mean, years. if the sun burns out, I think your roof is probably. I think it takes seven the years. Least of your concerns, right? I'm not sure how long it takes, but doesn't it take a certain amount of time for us to realize the sun has burned out? like two years or something. <laughs> I hope we're not in that moment right now. I hope there are people that are way smarter than me that are yeah, telling that, me that, that, uh, yeah, they're, they're scientists. We still have the sun. The answer we still that. have the sun. Hopefully for now. So yeah. Sun don't burn out. Let me Stop get my solar roof spray. and, uh, you know, we get this shit crack a lacking. Yeah, this is, uh, this is fucking cool. And I hope to see more shit like this. The goddamn Tesla roof. It looks fucking cool as shit. I like this better than the underground tunnel. I yeah, gotta be honest. I, I like the tunnel thing. It's cool. Uh, but I like this better, it's, but I don't live in LA. So fuck the tunnel. It's, uh, it's taking the, I could probably drive across my, uh, not six minutes is probably not happening, but it's, it's not that far. So this is something that's more, um, more beneficial to more people, I think, than that. And I, not that I don't think the underground tunnel thing is cool, too, but I think that, you know, God damn it, roofs fucking break down like motherfucking crazy. Oh, I have no to put shit. a new roof on my house. It's going to last the lifetime of so the house. You fucking throw this shit on there. It's a and big down payment, and then you're good forever. Yeah, absolutely. As and long as it, you don't get kicked out of your house. And it saves on, <laughs> yeah, as, as long as your fucking mortgage company is not coming after you and kicking your ass out because you're not paying their absorbent fucking mortgage payments to get your goddamn house so you can live somewhere. Um, yeah, solar roof is fucking cool. So yeah, yeah, don't think we didn't see that uh, underground tunnel thing. There's just too many questions right now about it. The, yeah. the, the security of it, the, the how much it's going to cost. That's all good. Implementation. There's just too many questions right now for the underground tunnel. But it's cool. But the and next we time we Musk, read man. about that shit, we'll definitely talk about it. So um, on to the next Absolutely. one. Absolutely. So I'll tell you what, man. The the Tesla roof, it's pretty fucking cool. It's uh, It could be a game changer. And the next story, you're going to hear it, and you're going to be like, that's probably not a game changer. And you might actually think what I thought was, is this fake? There's no <laughs> way this, There's no way that this is real. When you see the goddamn picture, and you're going to say, no, this cannot be real, but this is actually a thing that is fucking happening or maybe happening, I guess, is a better way to talk about it. So let's talk about goddamn chicken VR. It's a fucking thing or it's going to be a thing. So chicken virtual VR, reality, second livestock. Let's talk about Eddie. Yeah, virtual reality. Uh, they're uh, they're putting these uh, Oculus Rift goggles on chickens. Not not currently, but they're they're looking well, they're to do that. They're experimenting with it yeah. on these farms. It will help farmers 
a harvest higher numbers of chickens and would enable farmers to raise the chickens closer together while still providing the mental experience. AKA treating them like shit like they currently do. <laughs> yeah, of living on an open field. So basically, they're still going to be shitting and pissing and fucking each other left and right. Right, where they literally can't Right move. on top of each other, yeah. But they'll have the goggles on and right. won't realize so be, what the hell's going on. They'll be totally all right. So they'll be like your average like basement dwelling video game player where they don't move around and their uh, limbs are all atrophied and shit, but they got a VR headset on. So, hey, don't worry. They're not reality ready, but they're fucking VR ready. So this is fucking crazy, crazy to me. So I, like I said, I first read this story. I'm like, there's no way this shit is real. But it is literally something that they are trying to make a reality. Um, they want to make chickens that are not free range you know feel like they're free range by putting them into this fucking second livestock thing there's some hilarious goddamn photos where you see what the chicken might see (laughs) this is actually a person with the vr headset on but they're looking at you know cartoony ass fucking ps1 level fucking chickens um i mean i guess you know chickens might want to feel like they can just walk around and um it it makes them feel like they have a happier life yeah and i mean they and they clearly don't and they're clearly just fucking uh you know this is the equivalent of putting the oculus rift on the uh, orcas in sea world yeah yeah even though they're they're enslaved in this little space (laughs) they they, they think they're swimming around in this fucking giant ocean but they're not you would need a really big oculus rift for orca i think and waterproof yeah and waterproof so uh yeah uh oculus if you're listening there you de- go oculus de- rift develop Bing! that shit for the goddamn orcas waterproof be- oculus rift i believe they actually they, so they did actually kill off the well that's a bad phrase but they they stopped having the orca and the whale shows and stuff um at sea world right is that correct no they're still going oh i thought they i thought they killed it off oh sea world yeah hell no i thought that was the whole blackfish thing i thought that they stopped doing that now because they, they might have stopped for like yeah. two weeks and then, and then they just, they just right brought that shit it. back so <laughs> Um, so my big thing with this thing is, so I'll, I'll tell you what, so, you know, I've, I've touched a little bit upon the fact that, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I'm a vegetarian or, you know, I very, very occasionally, occasionally eat fish. You know, I talked about the sushi thing, which is, I guess that kind of makes me a little bit of a hypocrite. Cause I know that, you know, fish are for sushi are you know, being fished like fucking crazy and they have the farm things going on with them. And, uh, they're definitely not being treated well either. But uh, I believe Kurt Cobain said uh, it's okay to eat fish because they don't have any feelings. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm not currently eating chicken and uh, I I do eat eggs and I actually try to buy free range eggs because, I mean, on the, you know, on the surface level, it feels like, hey, fucking chicken should be able to walk around and shit if we're going to fucking take their eggs and stuff. Yeah. Um, But they have a lot of information in the article where they talk about how maybe free range for chickens is not as good as it seems and that the animals actually sustain more injuries. They end up with broken little talons and, uh, yeah, I don't know, their wings get, I don't know, some other bullshit that I was going to make up right there. But um, I think in the end, though, let's be honest here. What this is is that having chickens be free range means that farmers have to have a lot more space to be able to make that happen, and it costs them a lot more money. And so I'll tell you what. God damn it. Free range is more expensive. You're a cheap motherfucker. I know what you're doing. You're like goddamn Bill O'Reilly. You're saying it's the no spin zone, but it's the goddamn spin zone. You're trying I'm getting dizzy. You're, All the spinning. <laughs> you're trying to make me think it's okay for chickens to be treated like absolute shit and injected with steroids that fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger would say. No, I'm I don't do an Arnold. No, you had so, it. That sounded no, great. that was going to be a Russian impression. Oh, He's not great. Russian, but uh, yeah, don't limit yourself. <laughs> I'm not I'm not. Do impre- you have a chicken impression? When uh, <laughs> that was a rooster impression. But uh, yeah, you know, let's be honest here. You're treating chickens like shit still. And now you want to put them in goddamn virtual reality. How about instead of that? How about we just say, hey, the way we're treating animals right now is probably not that cool. And we should maybe think about treating them a little bit differently. And I'm not telling everybody, hey, don't eat meat. But if you are a meat eater and you are not paying any attention to the treatment of animals, then honestly, you're burying your fucking head in the sand and you're pretending that animals are a lesser fucking being than you. And that makes you fucked up. And that makes you a part of the problem. In my opinion, hey, you got your own opinion and I'm not here to say you're wrong, but I am. I have my own podcast, so you're wrong. So stop putting... Don't listen to Ray. <laughs> the views of Ray, the jerk, do not imply anything the correct here views. Of, the, of the jerk of all trades. 
Chicken is delicious. Our ancestors ate chicken. Our ancestors hunted animals. Our, our ancestors, ancestors ate meat. did a lot of shitty things. So, and uh, it, we wouldn't be here for our ancestors. Let's make America shit. great again so, uh, by going back to the 1950s. You know, if this That's makes, what he's saying. If this makes chicken taste better, I'm all for it. But if it makes it makes it taste bad, I'm definitely against it. Is it is this kind of like the sheep thing where it's all about the taste? Hey, we wanna we wanna breed sheep just so we can do a little taste test on them. So let's, let's take some fucking VR chickens and let's compare them to regular chickens yeah. and let's see what their eggs taste like. And yep. then let's see what their breasts taste like. And let's see oh, what their I fucking mean, gullets. I the yeah. <laughs> I bet, I bet you fucking do you chicken fucking motherfuckers. So. Actually, you know, I'm a drumstick guy myself. All right, that's all right. Uh, you know, I, this has got to disgust you as a, a, a vegan, but, uh, I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegan. I'm not even a vegetarian. Uh, there's a word for it and it's not either of those things. Okay. So it but is what I'm, it I'm is. more of a drumstick guy and the juicier, the better, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little questionable. So we don't support Eddie, uh, getting, uh, <laughs> getting fucking chicken boners on the podcast. And that's what's happening right now. And I'm going to put an end to it. So it is fucking done. Chicken VR. <laughs> it's fucked up. God damn it. Don't put chickens in VR. God damn it. Just treat them better. So there it is. Chicken VR. What the fuck? So, yeah. All right. So in America, fucked up America, we're kind of fucked up. Uh, we're putting goddamn VR headsets on chickens. But I'll tell you what, the rest of the world, it's a little weird, too. So in, <laughs> we aren't the only ones. We're, we are not the only weird ones in the world. So in India, they are just trying to stop the goddamn monkeys from fucking shit up and they are trying to stop them from fucking each other so next topic let's talk about goddamn monkey birth control let's do it this is crazy fucking crazy monkey birth control as if they weren't close to being human enough as it is uh yeah they are so are we gonna have like maury povich uh who's who's the, <laughs> who's the baby daddy monkey who is the fucking baby is this daddy gonna be a bunch of monkeys on stage I just trying to kill each other <laughs> i imagine a whole fucking green screen. i use protection bitch i imagine a whole fucking like thing on the fucking screen with a bunch of different monkeys it's not all, my baby they all look the same and a bunch of their faces are crossed out they're like they fucking test them and they're like that monkey is not the father, and that monkey fucking mama fucking and, runs backstage. Yeah, the, She's the, so upset. The guy monkey's so happy. He's like high fiving all oh the monkeys. Oh my god, the audience, he is the fucking loving it. So <laughs> let let's let, before we dig into this fucking topic, let's talk about the fact that I believe it was like three weeks ago. Now we fucking threw it out into the goddamn universe that we wanted a fun fucking monkey oh, story. Oh, that's right. After the after the float tank, we got it. Eddie's brilliant fucking idea to throw a monkey into a float tank and see what happens this is what happens two weeks ago we had a goddamn gorilla a guy in a gorilla costume running a marathon it was sort of monkey related i took what i could get it was a primate then next week we had fucking reese's monkeys not reese's pieces <laughs> reese's monkeys on the fucking prowl in florida stealing statues Possi possibly stealing <laughs> statues. We allegedly. don't allegedly. We don't know. Fucking Bigfoot statues, Ronald statues. And now I'm on the hunt. Now this goddamn week, we have the same type of monkeys in fucking India and they're fucking in India as well. And apparently these motherfucking monkeys are fucking shit up. They are swinging on water pipes, breaking goddamn water pipes. The goddamn <laughs> Indian plumbers got to come <laughs> fix this shit. <laughs> they're coming into people's kitchens as the article says, like a goddamn human and opening the refrigerator and you better stay away from my goddamn beer. You motherfucking Reese's monkeys. You are not getting my fucking beer, dude. I'm telling you that much. So these goddamn monkeys are just fucking shit up and they got to figure out a way. Uh, I actually have notes on this and I, I talk about all the things they're doing and there is a bullet point in which I just say they are assholes and they are fucking assholes. These goddamn 12 to 17 pound fucking Reese's monkeys. They bite a thousand goddamn people in India nationwide. They're fucking up crops, $300 million in crop losses, diverted labor. They're fucking shit up. And so they got to figure out what the fuck to do. So what do they do? Eddie, why don't you tell them what they do? They're calling the task force, the goddamn task force to get these goddamn monkeys. They're going to use an injectable contraceptive similar to what has been used on the white tailed deer and wild horses. They're trying to stop these goddamn monkeys from climbing all over the place and biting people all goddamn Quit time. Doing it, goddamn monkeys. This if you're listening to the podcast, stop doing it. India, man. I ain't going to India. You, no. you, unless I, I would like to go to India. I got to bring my own monkey to fight them other monkeys. Yeah. yeah. You know, I need my kung fu monkey. 
We need a goddamn kung fuck fu monkey, monkey that up. just hangs out in the float tank all day and he comes out and he's zen as fuck and he's just like, what are you doing, monkeys? Why are you doing this? Why are you destroying things? Like, why can't we just get along with the human beings? And it's like, because we're fucking monkeys, man. We don't have a fucking consciousness. We're not aware of what the fuck we're doing. I just want to fuck something. We have primal fucking urges, man. Hell yeah. So- well, apparently they spent a million dollars to uh, set up eight sterilization centers. Yeah. Uh, they already sterilized 125 thousand monkeys that's a lot of goddamn monkeys in the past 10 years and uh last time they tried to show a monkey how to put a condom on they ate the banana i believe (laughs) i believe we may have stolen that joke and you know what it's okay it's okay well that's okay because they steal our shit too yeah that's that's fine so uh an interesting aspect of this is that one of the reasons why they actually have not just like been like hey let's fucking exterminate those goddamn monkeys is that so in hinduism they actually have lots of gods they have like hundreds of fucking gods yeah. and uh one god i was actually familiar with these uh hanuman um i'm a big fan of ramdas uh uh, a book that fucking changed my life is be here now. And there's a whole section about Hanuman and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Duncan Trussell who talks a lot about, um, being a big fan of Ram Dass, So interesting little uh, connection there. But, uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, Hanuman is basically the monkey God and he represents strength and energy. And so they don't want to kill these monkeys because, you know, they connect it to to a god that they worship so um instead they're like fuck it let's fucking put some goddamn condoms on these goddamn monkeys let's uh (laughs) let's fucking snip their fucking weens and you know let's uh let's try to get these monkeys to stop biting everybody stop biting everyone and reduce their population and trying to fuck these chickens quit trying to these vr chickens quit trying to fuck the vr chickens you goddamn Reese's monkeys Quit coming over to the goddamn United States of America. You're an illegal fucking alien fucking monkey, and we don't want you here, and we do not want your kind here, and we do not want you hanging out in Florida and fucking scaring people (laughs) who are trying to take Instagram photos. It's fucked up, and we don't want it. So goddamn fucking monkey story came. We got our monkey story. Came into the fucking universe, (laughs) and we need to get these monkeys to stop coming because... I can not handle it anymore. So there it is. Monkey story. Jerk of all trades podcast episode eight. We fucking love it. We We love it. it. Finally, We, we finally fucking did it. It's done. There we are. And with that said, we are going to go to our second break of the show. And then we're going to come back and we have, Quite a few more fun topics for you. Oh, yeah. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, Uh, guys. We got a bunch of fun stuff left, and uh, we're just getting started. Yes. We will see you on the flip side of the music. Guys, we are back, and I'm, let me tell you something. Eddie the Jerk, Ray the Jerk. Yes, we saw this video online the other day. It's fucking weird, man, and it's fucking crazy. It's very bizarre. A giant sea creature, fifty feet long, washed up on Hullum Beach, uh, on Serum Island in Indonesia. Yeah, fucking crazy. It's bizarre looking, man. The whole entire beach, or the whole, the, all the water is uh, red. Little, little red from the blood. From the, all the blood. And it just looks like a giant fucking, fucking blob, man. Yeah, it's crazy. And this is yeah. supposedly a real animal that washed up. Now, obviously, there's sea creatures, ancient sea creatures. There's a lot of stuff in the oceans. We don't know. That we just don't know about. No, Maybe we, this is something they that... They just found that weird fucking uh, sucker eel thing or whatever. That I haven't heard like about a, that. It looked like a goddamn like black baseball or something. Uh, it was really... <laughs> Nothing against black baseballs, but yeah, or bla- baseball bats, but uh, did yeah. I say baseball bat? Baseball? I don't know, but uh, yeah, this thing is fucking but weird. But had nothing on this thing. Yeah, it looks fucking weird. I don't know what to make of this thing. Heads this or tails. thing was dead for three days when it was found. Yes. Uh, e- experts believe it's a big dolphin with fur, but now it's said to believe <laughs> the, to be a, a Balean whale. 
Yeah, yeah. It's so, 15 fucking meters long. It's, it's 50 a furry, goddamn feet long. Yeah, man. a furry sea creature. I mean, yeah. how many sea creatures have fur? Not a lot, I'm going to guess. I, I'm not I, a... I mean, are you telling me this isn't a real animal from, you know, uh, uh, you know, land? Like, I don't know what the fuck this I'm not, is. I'm not really sure as I look at this thing, like, what exactly it is. It's... Its skin is really odd and silvery. Yeah, it's, it's unlike anything you've ever seen. Very, before. very, very bizarre. It's very scary looking. Um, Check it out if you haven't. It's, it's shit. Out, Fifty foot sea creature, Indonesia. Right out of a goddamn horror movie, and it is really, really fucking weird looking. And now the it, crazy thing is, if that thing started moving, yes, <laughs> when they found it, that is the positive thing about this. At least it's dead, yeah. right? Because <laughs> I want to deal with that when that thing's alive. I mean, I've seen too many goddamn Godzilla movies and fucking Mothra movies and shit. So, um, yeah, luckily this thing is not alive. But I'll tell you what, they the newest Japanese Godzilla movie. They saw Godzilla and they were like, "Oh, it's fucking dead." <laughs> and then guess what? It started fucking like morphing and growing and becoming alive and eventually it was doing normal Godzilla shit and it was stomping down goddamn Japanese cities and it was fucking blowing its fire breath on shit and there is still a strong possibility it's been a week now right yeah it's been a week and I believe it was reported last Friday there was uh there was a couple articles that were like I believe the head one the headline was like mystery solved but then you read the article and yeah. it's like some fucking dude who, I mean, probably knows way more about sea creatures. And I, oh, whoa, here I see it's weird fucking maybe mouth thing. That's like, whoa, yeah, it's like leaning on some sort of concrete or something. And it looks really weird, it's but super goofy looking. But yeah, it's, you know, he's like, well, yeah, it's probably a baleen whale, maybe possibly. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> so... Yeah, they, they really haven't solved the mystery of this thing yet and what the fuck it actually is. Uh, it's super strange. It's uh, it's scary. It's spooky. And uh, I don't know if spooky is the right word, but uh, absolutely fucking disgusting would probably be a better yeah. description of this thing. Dude, you know what else is gross disgust, as fuck. disgusting and fucking sea um, creature looking and I'm gonna let... big, giant, fucking, <laughs> ugly looking motherfuckers? I'm going to guess the, uh, the fucking... Uh, the CEO and the fucking creator of goddamn Jimmy John's fucking subs, uh, Jimmy John Liotoud. I can't fucking pronounce his name, but who that gives a good. fuck? That sounds uh, good. So the, the biggest question at hand is, so um, we, you know, maybe maybe you do, maybe you don't. I know about this motherfucker. He's a fucking big game hunter. Uh, he likes to spend all of his Jimmy John's fucking fortune on going over to other countries and then killing animals that you really shouldn't be killing that are not trying to harm you. He's a fucking trophy hunter. Uh, and then he fucking kills elephants, rhinos. I saw a goddamn picture of him holding a fucking cheetah. Um, like, you know, he, he was pretty fucking smiley about it. And he so takes, is he the guy in this picture? Uh, yes, he is actually the guy in the picture. He, uh, oh, well, dry he, humping a shark. He, he's the guy in the picture where he's <laughs> Buck fucking naked. <laughs> He's uh, he's the guy in all the pictures. What where, the fuck? Where he's you know killing all these goddamn animals. You got animals, a giant but... shark on your boat. Fucking... What do you do? Yeah. Oh, I think I'm just Drop, gonna get naked and fucking it's just to see if this motherfucker's gonna bite my head off. Drop fucking trowel. The last and... thing I want is my balls next to this giant shark's teeth. You know, like if you're gonna, <laughs> he he got the goddamn second base with this motherfucking shark. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing, goddamn Jimmy John? Lia Toud. I'll tell you what. So I actually, uh, I have not been eating at Jimmy John simply because I don't agree with killing animals that there's no goddamn reason you should be killing. Why the fuck are you killing rhinos? You fucking piece of shit, rich motherfucker. But that's what he does. So I was already not supporting his goddamn business. Elephants too. Yeah. Fucking elephants, rhinos, all kinds of fucking exotic motherfucking animals. Motherfucking poachers kill elephants. He, he gets real goddamn excited about it. He really likes doing it. It's a fucking hobby of his. And if your hobby is killing fucking exotic animals that you, I guarantee. So I know like some of this shit, you know, Hey, they, they, they give the, the meat and all the stuff to the local, you know, people, but still it's fucked up. And what the fuck are you doing? You're a fucking piece of shit. And now you are very possibly killing a goddamn shark. And then you're butt fucking it. Like the, 
<laughs> in the in the picture. taking pictures. But this is like uh, the the page. not even he he's not that's not a tripod. He's got a buddy who's like all about it, who's giggling yeah. in the background as he very he's possibly like cucking the fucking uh, right. Shark. Exactly, exactly. His oh, fucking buddy. Oh god, yeah. Um, the there, picture back. <laughs> there, there he is. His fucking buddy is in the and background. His smile couldn't be any bigger. He's like he is in seventh heaven right now, jerking off his little tiny fucking rich dick over fucking Jimmy John, possibly Jimmy John. There's a lot of questions. Allegedly, Jimmy yeah, allegedly John Jimmy John. What the fuck? But uh, there's been some other rumors that the uh, the coach of the University of Florida is the guy. Yeah. Uh, some other person came in and said <laughs> he was that pretty pissed about that. It's some fucking dude from New York. Uh, Deadspin, I I guess uh, reported that. That's also not confirmed. Yeah, nobody's owning up to this. So right, and as you wouldn't. I mean, if you you're a fucking <laughs> idiot if you're naked on top of a shark. If, I don't care if it's dead or not. If you would kill the shark. And then you took your fucking pants off and then you laid on top of it. And let's be honest here. This is the fucked up thing. Let's ask the question. Did he have a chub? And if he had a chub, what percentage of chub did he have? Eddie, go. I don't know, man. I think you may be the chub expert. I don't <laughs> Are you talking about uh, the the shark or the how, or No, the no, guy? no, no, no. How, how excited was possibly Jimmy John? As he mounted this dead shark, I'm oh, gonna, he had a full fledged heart on. I'm gonna guess that oh, he was probably like uh, every bit of blood was. I don't know what the scale is. <laughs> What's the... Well, this, this if we're going from completed one out of five, he was actually a five out of five. Yeah, he had erectile for... mania going on. Yeah, there. he definitely did not have erectile dysfunction. I wonder what his wife thinks. He wants her to dress up in a goddamn shark costume, and that's the. I feel only bad way... for this poor shark. I don't know what happened after this picture got taken. There was. There was very possibly a fucking bukkake on the shark between Jimmy John and fucking uh, Jarrett from Subway. And I don't know who's <laughs> who's the cousin's fucking mascot. I'm not really sure. Um, yeah. All the fucking sub companies, mascots and owners just bukkake the fuck out of this shark. Uh, they fucking put it in a bowl and they dumped it on its dead head. And this is fucked up, man. Yeah. Jimmy John's. No matter- I love your sandwiches. But if this they're is not your that CEO, good. they're not that good. Uh, it's time to find a new job. Yeah. You know what? Go to a goddamn different sub place because I'm sorry. Maybe it's not Jimmy John. Maybe it's this guy from the University of Florida. Um, I'm not going to support either one of those things. If it's a random guy from New York, I'm never hanging out with you. Seriously. The bottom line is there is a human being in this world. Maybe it's Jimmy John Letoud. Maybe it's not. But there is a person who thinks, hey, I just killed this shark. You know what would be cool if I take my fucking swam trunks <laughs> off and I fucking put my fucking tiny little dink uh, on its fucking back. And that's fucked up, man. You know, what the fuck are you doing with your life? United, you're fucked up. You make people pee in cups. You fucking kill goddamn bunny rabbits. But you know what you don't do? You don't fucking take your your fucking pants off and you do not lay them down. Put your fucking little dick on them and then take a picture or have your fucking cuck friend do it. It's fucked up. Whoever did it, you're an enemy of the podcast. Just to let you know, you might get the middle finger of the week. Don't fuck up in the next week or you will be spotlighted once again. Fuck anybody who humps a dead shark. Fuck anybody that fucking... What a fucking douchebag, this guy. Seriously, you know what? What if he humped a live shark? That's what needs to happen. Yes. You know what? That should be the punishment for being so stupid. You fuck a dead... You you try to fucking hump a, a dead shark, you gotta fuck... Or uh, you got to hump a live shark. So yep. there well, it is. On the topic of douchebags. Uh, there's a lot of douchebags out there, but uh, there is a douchebag that out douchebags all you take this one, the other douchebags in the world. And I'm going to talk about motherfucking Jeff Sessions. Fuck this guy. So he's the goddamn attorney general. And uh, I believe he's friends with Trump. Reinstating Can, mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenders. So, I believe you're talking about. Uh, yeah, he, he is. So I I always think of the uh, the prison song by System of a Down where they scream about uh, not having mandatory minimum sentences. So, uh, but aside from that, yeah. So let's be honest here. I think we can all admit. And you know what? I'm very pro drug. I'll be honest with you. I've had a lot of experience with drugs in my life, and uh, you know maybe less than I did before, but. Um, I think people should be able to do what the fuck they want with their goddamn bodies, and you are not going to goddamn regulate it. The war on drugs, it's been happening since fucking Ronald Reagan fucking laid it down. He fucking, we had our fucking infomercials that tried to show us what our brain looked like on fucking drugs, and there was fucking (laughs) eggs in the skillet, and I got super hungry, and they were not VR chicken fucking eggs. (laughs) And uh, 
So the war on drugs has been a giant failure. There is no other way to look at it. It is not working. It has not worked. Drug use is more rampant. Just tr- trying to stack up those prisons. Absolutely. So prison economy. Yes. So we, we talked about the fucking prison system a little bit. We talked about Arkansas and how they're fucking treating people like a fucking uh, expiring gallon of milk and fucking executing people. So the bottom line is, is that the fucking prison system is a giant fucking business for this country. And it is to their best interest to keep as many people in those prison systems as they can. And here's the thing that's so fucked up about it. What it does is it exploits people that are poverty stricken, it exploits minorities and really people of all skin colors who are in a bad situation in their lives and they turn to drugs. And I mean, it's questionable, uh, but maybe not that questionable that fucking crack cocaine was introduced into the black community in the 1980s. And it was a way to fill the fucking prison systems. You know, you have people that are poverty stricken that their lives are not going well. And then you introduce something that maybe makes it a little bit better for a little bit. And it gives them an opportunity to maybe get out of the situation that they're in. Put food on the table. Clothes, Absolutely. Clothes for Everybody kids. has that, you know, they want to take care of their families, you know, regardless of you know, who they are and what they come from. And then what do you do? You put them in fucking prison. And it's it. these fucking wardens in these prisons are actually graded on the amount of people that are in their prisons. And that's fucked up, man, because we have more people in prison than any other goddamn country by a very, very wide margin. And I had hoped that we were moving away from that. And I, w- I had hoped that we were going to be treating drugs a little bit differently that, than we did in the past. And instead of just treating those people like criminals, we tried to figure out what is it that is causing those problems? What is it that's causing the people to turn to drugs? You know, they, they have a bad situation in their life. Um, you know, they want to get out of it. Um, they, you know, they live in ran a, into a hot chick that does drugs, right? They ran into a hot <laughs> chick that did drugs and they wanted to do drugs and be cool. Um, I'm sure that's a little bit, uh, lower on the scale of reasons why people do drugs. Obviously everyone has a different reason. And if you have a reason why you do drugs, uh, definitely hit up the podcast and let us know why you do oh, drugs yeah, or sure. why you don't give do us drugs. your story. But, uh, so yeah, you know, we pe- won't rat you out. We promise. No, we, we promise. Especially not the Jeff motherfucking sessions. No, Jeff, se- Jeff sessions. Fuck you. Um, uh, back, back to my last point there. Uh, you know, people have fucking stresses, anxieties. They want to fucking escape from life. Maybe they just want to, ex- you know, for me, I always wanted to, yeah, and this is not the only reason I did drugs. I did a lot of drugs just to get fucked up, but um, I also did them to, you know, further my consciousness and, you know, get in touch with myself and humanity a little bit more. But, um, you know, people have all these different reasons for doing drugs. And the last thing you want to do is be fucking thrown in a goddamn fucking cell for trying to alter their perception and alter their lives. And instead, let's look at like, what are the problems in our society that are causing these problems? How about the giant, giant fucking divide between the, the haves and the have nots. You got 1% that controls 99% of the wealth. And then you've got them basically creating this false fucking war between the middle class and the lower class. And that's how you end up with this kind of shit because people are so fucking scared in the rat race of life that they're going to slip through the cracks and that they're going to become, you know, the lower class. And that's how, you know, people end up in this situation. So let's fucking start taking care of people and providing the things that we should be providing to them. Fucking healthcare. God damn it. Let's give, we are the only giant fucking nation in the world that is not providing health care to all of our citizens. And we're moving backwards on that. Let's fucking give further education, college educations. New York is fucking doing it, but let's fucking move that shit further. Let's give education to people because knowledge is fucking power. And we are not at the point yet where we can download loading into fucking people's brains. <laughs> but I Harper. guarantee you, people like Jeff Sessions will try to keep that shit from people because he and his fucking rich goddamn cronies have a very vested interest in people not having that knowledge and people fucking being sent to prison over bullshit like fucking drug use. I fucking do not like it whatsoever. And fuck you, Jeff Sessions. You suck. And if you think that moving back to when America was great to the 1980s to the 1990s, yeah, there was great things. But we need to move forward as humanity. We need to progress. And what you are doing is regressive. Even the most hardcore goddamn conservatives, the fucking Cook brothers are saying this is a step back. 
And when that's happening, you know there's a fucking problem. <laughs> Jeff Sessions, you're a weird looking motherfucker. Legalize it all, goddammit. You look like fucking. Uh, Just legalize it already. <laughs> you look fucking weird like a goddamn dwarf or something, and I don't fucking like you with your it looks fucking. Looks like a 1980s motherfucking goofball. You really, really goddamn bother me, and I don't like you, and I don't like what you're doing in this goddamn country. So, with that being said, fuck you, Jeff Sessions. Fuck mandatory minimum sentences. Let's fucking legalize it all. There has been many nations that have done it, and it has worked out swimmingly. So, fuck you, Jeff Sessions, and you suck. So, there we are. Let's start with weed first, though. Yeah, let's get that money. I mean, we're 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 but here's the deal, man. There that money is to be had in all of that stuff. So, yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's get that money. Let's stop fucking around. Yes, absolutely. So there we are. Well, speaking of legalizing drugs, Ray. Yes. I want my goddamn acid. Uh, You want your acid and I want my goddamn acid, too. Kind so, of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really afraid of acid, but I'm not going to admit that on the podcast. I believe Whoops, yeah. it's too late. I think he actually admitted it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked last week about ketamine being used for depression, and um, we talked a, a little bit about um, all the different psychoactive drugs out there that mm-hmm. are being used for you know medicinal purposes. And basically, the bastardization of these drugs is kind of starting to uh, break by the wayside, and hopefully people are going to be able to utilize these things in different ways and such. Um, and one such person that's going to do that is uh, Amanda Fielding. And she runs uh, something called the Beckley Foundation. And uh, what she's At bas- first, I thought this was Becky Foundation. This is not This is not the Becky Foundation. I need that Becky. I need my Becky. I need my acid. <laughs> uh, does Becky have any goddamn acid? I don't know. So um, she's an interesting individual. Um, at one point in her life, she actually uh, did something called trepanation. And what trepanation is, Oh yes. uh, it, it's actually, it dates back tens of thousands of years and you know, Hey, let's, let's, let's make the world great again. You know what our ancestors did. So, uh, but, uh, basically what it is, is it's drilling a tiny hole into your skull and letting it heal naturally. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to induce higher states of consciousness and lead to a happier and healthier life. And so, mm. uh, with that being said, uh, I wanted to throw it out there to Eddie um, What's up? What what he thought about? So we we broken a lot of cherries on the show. I'm afraid of acid, and I'm afraid of drilling a <laughs> hole in my head. So if that's what you're wondering, may, maybe going forward we might have a very uh, a very the very special uh, trepanation episode. I'm of getting on the phone right now, Jeff Sessions. <laughs> this motherfucker got drill a hole in my head. <laughs> the very special episode of the JOAT podcast. My question is, how long does it take for the hole to heal? Or I does it ever heal? I don't know. I don't know. I saw some uh, actually sort of horrifying pictures in which we saw the uh, trepanation of the past where there was like, it looked like they used uh, basically a uh, a rock or something to put the hole in the head. So oh, God. I believe they could use the brain drill at this point, and that I'll would pass. probably be a little uh, little. Can't we just go to humane. the float tank again? <laughs> uh, anybody out here who is a fan of uh, Darren Ar- uh, Aronofsky, I uh, probably butchered the fuck out of his name he's directed a lot of great movies uh the wrestler uh he directed requiem for a dream i thought you said great probably movies. the most depressing movie of all time <laughs> uh, the wrestler's a great movie but um and uh he directed a movie called pie and in the movie pie the uh, the guy actually does trepanation he uh, drills a hole in his head and um it definitely doesn't paint it in a very interesting light so is that with the kid that gets stuck out at sea no Oh, no, it's uh, no, that's it's Life of Pi. It's a black and white movie, and uh, yeah, that's definitely not that. Have you ever seen Life of Pi? I have. It's actually a that's really, a really good movie yeah. and uh, super uplifting. I really like that movie. Pi is not all that uplifting. It's this guy basically uh, losing his fucking mind, and eventually he decides to drill a hole in his goddamn head. Oh so, God. Um, yeah, probably not the the happiest movie out there. So, but uh, you know that aside. So you know, LSD cre- uh, increases creativity. Yeah, so basically, uh, so she's been u- using LSD for a very long time. She used to use it back in the 60s. And, and this she, is Amanda? Uh, yeah, Aman- Amanda? Amanda Fielding. Yeah. She noticed that her creativity actually increased quite a bit. Uh, she used to play the ancient Chinese game of Go with her friends, and she noticed that she would be on a huge winning streak when she was you know, taking, dropping fucking hits of acid. That's pretty cool. And so she kind of wants to know now, does it actually improve cognitive function and intuitive pattern recognition? And I mean, to anybody who's done LSD or anyone that's done any sort of psychoactive drug, I can definitely tell you that, you know, 
you know the small percentage of your brain that you utilize. You know, it's like less than 10%. Speak for yourself. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> you're, a tr- you're a Trump I'm supporter. I'm a 37%. You're a Trump supporter. I believe I'm like, a 4.3% I believe uh, you're actually, you, brain function. You use uh, 2.8% of your brain. Oh, hell no. Uh, that that is. I do uh, that in my sleep. A, that's official, so. Uh, but yeah, anybody who's ever done a psychoactive drug can definitely tell you that it puts you in touch uh, with different aspects of your brain. It connects different neurons that don't normally connect and it gives you a different perspective on things. And so, um, you know, LSD has basically been bastardized since the sixties. And now we're finally seeing this like renaissance of psychedelic drugs. We talked about ketamine last week. Uh, MDMA is being used this way. LSD, psilocybin, uh, which is magic mushrooms. Um, all of these things are being looked at in a different light now. And of course they're all super, super fucking illegal. And hopefully, you know, that's going to change. But with Jeff Sessions, it's very possibly not going to change. Um, so what her deal is, is that she wants to do what's called microdosing, which I talked about last week. I personally did some microdosing with some psilocybin and it really allowed me to be able to make some very drastic changes in my life. So um, these people are going, uh, they're going to be 20 people to start. They're going to uh, be given either 10, 20 or 50 micrograms. By the way, don't fuck that up. Don't take milligrams. Uh, <laughs> do not take 50 milligrams of LSD or you will be fucked up and you will definitely be drilling a hole in your brain. Um, In the words of Shao Kahn, you will die. You will die. Well, I will actually tell you that LSD... Mortal Kombat 2? There has actually never been a documented case of actual, true, pure LSD ever killing anyone in any Oh, amount, nice. Ever. Interesting. Um, there's... there's Obviously, you, you've probably seen all this. What same. about, like, turning into a, a vegetable or something? No, no. No? There has never been any proven documented cases. It's a lot of bastardization. Um, it's been, you know, the powers that be don't want people to expand their brains like that. They don't want people to think of things differently. Um, the same thing that happened with marijuana, uh, it's it happened with LSD, and it happens with a lot of drugs like that. You know, they want, they want you to take the drugs that they want you to take, and they're definitely not the ones that make you see through the bullshit. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, basically what they're going to do is they're going to use an MRI. They're going to study the brain activity on the 20 subjects and have them perform cognitive tasks and see what does their brain look like? Are they, are they better at those cognitive tasks while they are taking LSD? And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really fucking interested to see where this goes and what happens with this. So Eddie, what do you think about all this? It's pretty wild, man. It's like, uh, you know, if they can, LSD can take my sports gambling to the next level. Oh, I'm my God, it. again. <laughs> Hell, yeah. We really actually need to get Eddie to take LSD. I will take be taking LSD. acid three times a week if I have to. Eddie would be the only person that would take LSD and that would be like, how can I win? How, how can I get more money? How can I win? I need more money. I just need to win something. I love Trump. How can I meet Trump? How can I hug the fuck out of Trump and give him a goddamn hug and give him a goddamn reach around? And, uh, yeah, that's uh, just me and Trump. On LSD, butt naked with a dead shark. That's <laughs> that, all I want. That is a sitcom waiting to <laughs> fucking happen. I would love to see that shit. So, uh, yeah, this is this is fucking cool. I hope it happens. They have to raise a lot of money. They have to raise $350,000. They've got a company called Fundamental. It's a platform uh, that's being utilized to raise donations for uh, psychedelic research. Um, but the biggest thing with this is... How the fuck are they going to get that acid? So they can't just go to the local dealer and they can't be like, hey, man, you got you got some fucking orange sunshine. No, they actually have to get this shit legally. And there's a lot of fucking legal red tape to go through. And yeah. so I hope they fucking make it happen. And I hope that we continue to see research come out about this shit because I think it can help a lot of people. It's helped me and it's helped a lot of other people out there. And let's stop just pretending that it's bad and instead let's get some real fucking information we've got the information highway as they try to make it called out there that's got everything at your fucking fingertips and so let's really take a an objective look at this stuff and see it is there be, some positive yeah, it would be really crazy for acid of all drugs to have such a benefit to the human brain yeah, yeah it would absolutely. be super super insane to think that because acid is the drug i'm most afraid of I've heard the worst stories. About you should respect it. I don't that, think you should uh, fear it. I think you should respect it. Yeah. So if it does have benefits to the human brain to where like, you know, you get better at games and stuff and cognitive function or you and, just become a better person or because well, it's yeah, all that you get all out that of it, man. stuff and all that stuff too. But like, you know, I'm more into the numbers of it all. 
but uh, that's cool, man. The, but, the world yeah. is numbers, zeros and ones, man. Absolutely. So, like, you know, of all the things, I would have never guessed acid. Yeah, fucking acid. So, but if it works, I'm definitely not against it. Absolutely. So, Jeff Sessions, fuck you. Stop trying to regulate my goddamn <laughs> brain and my goddamn body. It's not gonna fucking happen. You suck. And prison so, economy's coming to an end. I hope so. I fucking hope so because you know what? Because the internet's in town and everybody is. Woke. I mean, I hate I hate to toot our own horn, but the Jerk of All Trades podcast. We are throwing that fucking information out there to you guys. We're throwing this fucking positive energy out in the world, even though we're the fucking jerks. We still have all of your best interests at heart. We want the world to be a better place. I guess Absolutely. I can only speak for myself, but I think. I can safely say that we both want the world to be a better place and shit like this is what's going to make the world a better place. And Hey, maybe it, maybe it doesn't do those things, but let's at least know that for sure. Instead of just watching some documentary from the fucking 1940s and just assuming, yeah, that probably makes sense. So if you fucking smoke weed, you're going to jump out a window. Well, as far as probably not, as far as I'm concerned where there's smoke, there's fire. So if this is having benefits for this woman, Amanda Fieldley, yeah, uh, Many other most people, Most likely, it's going to have a positive effect on other people. I well. hope so, man. I hope so. So, so progressive cool. medicine, I'm all about it. Absolutely. And uh, do the damn thing, Let's Amanda. fucking do it, man. So, um, she yeah. gets a thumbs up from me. Yeah, we we love you, and we're probably not going to drill holes in our brain. No, no drills skills. for me, but... Uh, I joked about it. We're not doing it. Hell no uh, for me. But, uh, yeah, uh, this is fucking cool, and I hope this fucking comes to fruition. We can have a beer, though. And, uh, yeah. So with that being said, um, that's going to pretty much wrap up the podcast. But before we go out, um, we wanted to do a little debut once again. So earlier we talked about the monkey story that we were able to throw out into the world. Which is proof that if you speak something into the universe. Yes. The universe will respond. Back Synchronicity, to you. man. Yes. If you if you put out energy to something and you truly believe in it and you don't let your own mind fuck it up. That shit will become a reality when you least expect it. And you know what? We had one week. We had a gorilla. It wasn't quite a monkey. Then we had week two, and we had a monkey story. It was all right. This week, we had a great monkey story. So <laughs> the the new fucking uh, theme on the show here is going to be the universal call out for a topic for the Jerk of All Trades podcast. And so Eddie and I talked about it, and it's like, man, what is the topic going to be? What are we going to make it be? And then I thought that's really against the point because what that does is that puts your own mind into it and that's how you fuck your shit up. So what we're going to do is I found a website and it basically randomly selects a number of topics and we're going to, I'm on the website right now and I'm going to hit refresh and there's going to be four topics and Eddie and I are basically going to see what the topics are. And we're going to, amongst ourselves, decide what is the topic, and then we're going to throw out into the world. Are we going to speak about the four topics, or do I? Are we just? We gonna... can. No, we can. Uh, we can. Yeah, let's. Uh, okay. Let's. We'll let them know what the four topics are, and then we will, amongst ourselves, decide what is the topic that we're going to throw out there. Then we're going to put our energy out, and we're going to hope that it comes becomes a reality. So it'll come. All right. So. We are here. I'm hoping the four words that come up is Eddie wins the lottery. I don't <laughs> think those are the things that are going to happen. Come on, generator. Randomize that motherfucker. All right. So refresh. It's random. You never know. All right. So we got blacksmiths, Africa, mountaineering, and bats. What Ooh. is what is your choice? I don't hate bats. I actually like bats. It's the first thing that I um, I really connected with. So Bat story. All right. So, Episode nine. Episode nine, we are throwing it out into the world. We want an awesome, awesome fucking bat story. So bats do some fucking crazy, <laughs> crazy shit in this universe, in this crazy fucking world Hopefully that no a, one understands. A bat lands on Jeff Sessions' face and rips his eyeballs out. That would be cool, but I will just take any goddamn cool bat story. If you're a bat doing acid, if you're a bat attacking Jeff Sessions, <laughs> if you are a bat that kills Jimmy John and then you oh, geez. and then you hump him and you have your bat friends take a picture. I would love that, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Give me a cool fucking bat story universe and I will love you forever. And guess what? We love all of you guys. Oh yeah. We're going to call it quits for this episode of the jerk of all trades podcast. We have an awesome, awesome fucking episode next week. We are going to be talking about the return 
of Twin Fucking Peaks, my favorite show of all time. Nice. I love David Lynch. He fucking changed my goddamn life with his filmmaking. 25 fucking years in the making. Season three. It is starting Sunday on Showtime. It's going to be on at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Eddie and I. We're, yeah. ha- we're having a fucking Twin Peaks party. It's going to be awesome. I'm about halfway through right now. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying it. Twin Peaks is very good. Yes. Uh, it's a lot better than I was expecting. It is a grind. There's 29 episodes, and they are all uh, roughly 45 to 48 minutes. There's a couple episodes in there that are an hour and a half long. There are two episodes in one. It's almost like a movie. But it's definitely worth worth your time. Absolutely. It's one of the better TV shows I've seen. Uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, but uh, so for me to give this a thumbs up. Yes, I was impressed. Is, is, uh, I was impressed. When very I, rare. I did not expect Eddie to like the show, and he actually likes it a lot. We're having a fucking Twin Peaks party on Sunday. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have goddamn. We may have that podcast uh, on Sunday night. It very well may we be. We may have a Sunday night podcast. We got, I got, I'm going to have goddamn donuts that are going to be stacked on top of each other. I'm going to have delicious fucking pie. Mm. I'm going to have black coffee, and I'll have some creamer pie. for Eddie. And we're going to watch the fuck out of season three premiere of Twin Peaks, and then we are going to have a fucking podcast. Eddie the Jerk is all about, about that it. pie. So, Yes. Well, Eddie, what's your favorite kind of pie, Ray? Um, I'm gonna go with chair pumpkin poontang. Yeah, so, <laughs> jerk of all trades. You made me nervous for a second there. I was gonna you say, you know, bro, you know, keep I, it real. Yes, keep it real. Yes, jerk of all trades podcast episode eight. It's in the fucking bag. We're gonna be next. We week. We love you guys. We're gonna be back next week. We'll be back. We fucking love you. Jerk of uh, all trades podcast. iTunes. Give us that five. Give us a review. Give us a fucking subscribe. We and uh, don't love forget. It. Yeah, don't forget Sunday night. We might be back. So check in with us yes. Sunday night. All right, Jerk of All Trades podcast episode eight. We're out. Out.